The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Amanda Nichols from CCIQ and I'll be your facilitator for today. Joining us is Kerry Hillhouse, Customer Manager at WorkCover Queensland. Welcome, Kerry. Thanks, Amanda. It's my pleasure to be here today. Now, through our partnership with WorkCover Queensland, we wanted to provide an overview to our members on WorkCover. Why is it important and how does it protect your business and your employees? And what better time to do this than during Small Business Week? Although we hope you never have to claim on your policy, it's important for you to know what to do if there is a claim and how WorkCover can help you and your workers so you can get on with running your business. But before we start, if you want to ask Kerry a question, you can do so at any time during the webinar by using the chat box that appears on the bottom right hand side of your screen. I'll now hand over to Kerry and she'll take you through today's presentation. Thanks, Amanda, and thanks everyone for tuning in. As Amanda mentioned, I'm a customer manager with the small and new business segment of WorkCover Queensland. I have over 15 years experience in workers' compensation in Queensland and I've managed, had the privilege of managing teams from all the key business areas of WorkCover, including claims management and rehabilitation, uh, premium and compliance, as well as common law. This has provided me with a really in-depth knowledge of the scheme that I'm keen to share with you here today. As a small business or owner or manager, we know there's a lot of things to be thinking about. This webinar is aimed at providing you with useful real world information that can help you with any insurance or work related questions you have so that you can get on with the task of running your business. What we'll cover today, uh, we'll be looking at the life cycle for small or new business, right from starting your business through to renewing your policy with us annually. You'll learn how work cover can protect your business and provide cover for your employees should a workplace injury occur. We're really focused on helping you stay in business and maintain your productivity. We'll cover the types of policies that work cover provides and who's covered under each of those policies. We'll give you some pointers around maintaining a safe workplace, and what you should do if a workplace injury does occur, and also some steps that you can take to be prepared before a claim happens. We'll talk about our injury information pack, a really amazing guide that we've developed for employers and workers, uh, and it can help you understand what's required and how you can best support your employees through a claims and the recovery process. This will help everyone achieve timely outcomes. Finally, we'll go over the process of renewing your policy. We'll help you understand how your premium is calculated and what steps you need to take. I really hope you find this in session informative and practical. Let's get started. First, we'll talk about who are we? Although we're a separate organisation, we work closely in partnership with the Office of Industrial Relations. It consists of Workplace Health and Safety, the Electrical Safety Officer, and the Workers' Compensation Regulator. For those that have been around with Workers' Compensation for a while, you would have previously known them as QCOM. Recently, in an effort to support Queensland businesses and the broader community, we united with OIR to deliver a single point of contact via a combined website and a, a combined 1300 362 128 phone number. It's your one-stop shop for all things workplace health and safety related in Queensland. WorkCover itself is an independent government-owned statutory body, which means we're governed by legislation, but we operate under the leadership of a board and CEO. We've been providing workers' compensation insurance in Queensland since 1997. We currently insure around 160,000 Queensland employers. Last financial year, our call centre took over 445,000 claims, incoming calls, sorry, and we accepted 66,430 workplace injury claims. This means we're able to assist over 66,000 Queensland workers to recover from injuries and we provided guidance to their employers to make sure they've maintained their ongoing output. We're completely self-funded and strive to maintain Australia's lowest average premium rate at $1.20. We do that through investment in our fast and easy to use online customer services an experienced in-house claims management team who save you time and money, as well as sustainable premiums and return to work outcomes for both employers and insured, injured workers. We're a really customer focused insurer and we aimed for insurance excellence. 
while it's mandatory for all employers in Queensland to take out an accident insurance policy, excluding self-insurers, we're committed to providing experience, customer experience and benefits that are equal to or better than a commercial employer. Our approach is really simple. We want to build lasting and value relationships with our customers and stakeholders. That means understanding our customers' needs and involving our business processes to suit those needs. A great example of this is our recent creation of the small and new business segment of which I'm a part. We now have a dedicated team who understands small business. We can provide detailed and step-by-step -step assistance to small business employers and their injured workers and delivering services really tailored to your needs. I'll just interrupt you there for a moment, Kerry. We've had a question come through around that. How closely does work cover work with the regulator? Great question, yeah. So as I mentioned, work cover and the regulator are completely separate. The regulator is part of the uh, OIR, um, but basically the regulator supports the scheme by facilitating legal and medical resolutions. They also provide education and they promote the scheme uh, on behalf of all the stakeholders. For work cover, that includes independently reviewing our claims decisions. For example, when we accept or deny a claim, or when we cease a claim or vary some compensation entitlements. If you have a business in Queensland and employ workers, it's compulsory to employ, insure them against workplace accidents by taking out an accident insurance policy with us. This policy ensures your business against both statutory or no fault claims, as well as damages costs in the case of a work-related injury. Should one of your teams sustain a work-related injury or an injury to or from work, WorkCover Queensland will provide compensation, including wages or weekly compensation, medical, surgical and hospital expenses are covered, as well as rehabilitation and other treatment costs. As an employer, you can benefit from our expertise in injury management and returning our focus on returning people to work. We can also provide guidance and support to assist you in understanding your premium. We have dedicated customer advisors who know your industry and they can help guide you through the process. We also have lots of resources on our website that can assist with injury prevention and best practice return to work activities in the case of an injury occurring. You're basically your accident insurance policy provides you with peace of mind so you can focus on what's really important, which is running your business. A lesser known product is our workplace personal injury insurance. This is an optional insurance and it covers anyone who's deemed an eligible person under our Act. These are individuals who are not workers, but they do receive remuneration or benefits for performing some kind of work or a service. They could be contractors, they could be self-employed individuals, a director of a company, a partnership, a partner of a partnership or a trustee of a trust. This policy only covers in the event of a work-related injury. So it's quite different to an income protection policy that provides 24 hour cover. We also have a compulsory insurance called the Household Worker Insurance Policy, and it's to cover anyone who's injured in or around your home. We'll cover you for the cost of compensation if they're injured while working for you. So these people are people that are employed in connection with your private residence or the grounds of that residence. That can be cleaners, it can be nannies, babysitters, it could be a gardener or tradespeople that are paid directly by you, not by an agency. It's only $50 for two years, so it's really great value for money and really reassuring to know that you're covered if somebody is injured in your working around your home. Who do I need to cover is a question so many employers ask and it's really crucial to understand who is a worker according to the Workers' Compensation and Rehabilitation Act and make sure that they're covered. This avoids being liable for claims costs and potential penalties if somebody is injured at work. Our legislation sets out that a worker is a person who works under a contract as employed for the purposes of assessment of PAYG withholding under the Taxation Administration Act. The first question to ask yourself is, are they an individual? Because companies are not covered and neither are partners or trustees, as we spoke about in the previous slide. Sole traders, however, are engaged as individuals and therefore they may be deemed workers. So it's important to note that they can be considered workers even if they have an ABN 
and or maybe are responsible for their own tax. What we're looking at here is the difference between a contract of service, which usually refers to the arrangement between an employer and an employee, for example, under the PAYG system, compared to a contract for service, which characterises the relationship with an independent contractor. To work out who is a worker, uh, to where, whether a worker is an employee or a contractor, we need to consider the whole of the working arrangement and look at the specific terms and conditions between the two parties, which are guided under the ATO's six common law factors. These questions include, is there an ability to subcontract out that work? Is there a payment made by hourly rate or is it for a result? Who provides the tools and equipment for the work? Who has liability for rectifying any defects or problems? Is there a right to direct how that work is performed? And is there a level of independence from the employer? For example, can that person refuse to accept further work? When we consider these options, we need to look at the totality. There's no one point that weighs more heavily than the other. If you're ever unsure, you can access the ATO online decision tool at the ATO website and that'll run you through specific questions for your situation. If you do use this tool, just be sure to keep a copy of the decision for your records. Or you can give us a call. We're always here to help. Ring us on our 1300 362 128 number and we can answer your questions specifically. Workers are, real, are still able to claim for workers' compensation if, they're, if you're an uninsured employer. We must pay compensation if the worker is entitled to it and we'll manage and pay those claims exactly the same whether you're insured or not. If we're required to pay a claim and you're uninsured, we need to recover from you the amount we've paid out on the claim as well as any unpaid premium plus possibly penalties for being uninsured. The importance of having a workers' compensation policy can be illustrated through this case study from a 24-year-old part-time barista who's working in a coffee car in the Brisbane CBD. This worker sustained a wrist injury while performing her usual work duties. Her employer unfortunately didn't have a workers' compensation policy, but she attended her GP and a work cover claim was lodged. We accepted that claim and the injured worker required surgical repair to a ligament in her wrist, as well as some time off work to recover following that surgery. She commenced a graduated return to work and over time she got back to her full duties. However, because her employer didn't have a policy, they were required to pay back the total cost of her medical, surgical and hand therapy treatment, as well as her weekly compensation benefits. For this specific example, that equated to almost $40,000 in claims costs. The employer also had to pay back uh, uh, the premium, which should have been paid in that financial year, and a penalty as well. We really don't want to see that happen to you. So if you have any questions or you just want to run it through a scenario, please, please give us a call. We're also wanting to have a look at running a safe workplace. As mentioned, work cover's focus is on managing claims for people who are injured at work. However, we work really closely with the OIR to promote safe workplaces and link employers with the best tools to help them. Creating a safe workplace has so many benefits for both yourself, your team, and of course your bottom line, including employee engagement, morale, uh, staff retention, and productivity. Workplace Health and Safety has heaps of resources on their website, on the website, including risk identification and assessment and management tools, some information on common industry specific safety hazards, and some guides on how to improve health and work well-being within your workplace. Moving on, looking at injury management now. Our system is a no-fault scheme. It means that workers, Queensland workers have the right to apply for statutory benefits no matter who or what caused their workplace injury. Injuries can happen at work, they can happen travelling to or from work or while on a break. Injuries can also happen if employees are travelling away from their workplace or visiting other sites for the purposes of their job. Some of the examples of injuries that we cover include obviously physical injuries such as lacerations or burns or fractures, psychiatric or psychological disorders like anxiety or depression. We also cover diseases including asbestosis or Q fever, 
aggravations of pre-existing conditions and fatality if there's an injury or disease within the workplace. Your actions as an employer when an injury occurs can have a really significant impact on the outcome of a claim. There's some key steps that we recommend. First one being connecting with your employee. Take an interest in their well-being and be supportive. Try not to blame them for the, the issue that's occurred. A really important part of a positive return to work is maintaining open and honest communication. Ensuring that an injured worker is kept up to date and feels supported can help them prevent help prevent them from feeling isolated from their workplace and their team. Secondly, we really encourage you to support them in seeking medical assistance as soon as possible. Early intervention is essential in ensuring the best possible injury resolution. You also need to work, notify work cover within eight working days of an injury being sustained. Even if an employee doesn't wish to claim, you need to report that injury to work cover. Lodging a claim is really quick and easy with us. You can lodge online. It's a simple process and it's available 24 hours a day at worksafe.qld.gov.au. Or you can lodge over the phone by fax or post. And claims can also be lodged directly via a doctor or hospital. Once a claim is lodged with us, we'll give you a call or contact you to, get, to obtain relevant information before we make a determination. We'll also gather information from the injured worker and depending on how complex the claim is from doctors or independent medical examinations or even witnesses to the event. Each and every claim is considered based on its individual facts and the relevant medical information. However, there's a few key criteria that are always considered. Firstly, has the claim been made within time? That's within six months of a worker first seeing a doctor for that, for that injury. Secondly, we say we look at whether they're deemed a worker, as we've spoken about in the previous slides. Next, we look at injury. Was there an injury caused by a work-related event? Was the person injured because of or in the course of their employment? And was employment a significant contributing factor to their injury? We aim for a five-day decision turnaround, but sometimes decisions can take a little bit longer, particularly if we have difficulty getting relevant information. If we can't determine a claim within 20 business days, we will put in a call to both yourself and the worker to let them know why there's been a delay. The worker's also entitled to written reasons for that decision and it will outline exactly why there's been a delay. Um, it, <clears throat> often that can be because of the complexity of the claim or the need to seek additional medical input. Once we've gathered enough information to decide the claim, both the injured worker and yourself as the employer will be informed of the decision. And if accepted and ongoing, we'll then move it across to our customer advisor team who specialise in rehabilitation and return to work injury management. Uh, just on that slide, um, Kerry, we've got a question. Uh, one of my employees lodged a claim for a sore back that I know he had previous to commencing work with me. Uh, why would this be covered under work cover? Thanks for the question. Um, we actually see this quite a bit, particularly with back injuries um, in more manual uh, work lines. Uh, in this particular instance, it's likely that that claim was accepted as an aggravation so as we all get older, we find that there's some degeneration or pre-existing pathology in our backs or other parts of our body. Um, and sometimes this is then aggravated by something that happens at work. This is a, a medical determination that we work closely with the doctors and we monitor the liability on those types of claims. Um, we will only be liable or you as an employer will only be liable to the extent of the aggravation. So we will be monitoring that quite closely with the doctor and the injured worker. And sometimes it even is that we, can, we will close these claims down while the worker is still reporting symptoms or ongoing pain. And that's when we're attributing that back to the original pre-existing condition rather than the work-related aggravation. A work-related injury can often be a difficult and emotional experience for all involved. But we're here to support recovery and achieve the best return to work outcomes by encouraging workers and employers, as well as medical and allied health pro providers to work together in partnership and to communicate openly between all those parties. If a workplace injury occurs and a claim is lodged and accepted, Work Cover really encourages you to take every step to provide suitable or modified duties within the workplace. 
Sometimes this terminology can be a bit confusing for workers and employers. A suitable duties plan simply matches tasks within the workplace with what the worker can and can't do. Is always approved by a treating doctor prior to commencing to make sure that the safe is the program is safe. When a person returns to work on a suitable duties plan, the supervisor and co-workers there, are, it's important to receive some support from them. And it's important that they understand the limitations of that person's suitable duties plan. This can reduce possible complications such as re-injury or other issues that can compound and lengthen the claim. We've developed this great information injury, injury information pack, which specifically assists small businesses to understand what's required in the event of a work place injury. Information sheets within this pack answer a range of frequently asked questions, including how can we best communicate with an injured worker, what the worker needs to do, it also outlines what you as the employer needs to do, and what role work cover will play. There's information on how weekly payments are calculated and how those payments will be processed to an injured worker. Some other key highlights from the pack includes a suitable duties register, which is a place where you can keep duties, um, compile a list of duties prior to an injury occurring that a worker can take with them to an initial medical appointment. There's also links to lots of return to work checklists on our website, a suitable duties plan template, so you can personalise that for your injured worker, and a sample letter that you can can help you communicate with the doctor regarding a safe return to work for your for their patient. There's also an incident form that should be completed at the time of an injury occurring and can help your business keep a record of any injuries that happen. The injury information pack is available on our website. We really encourage your business to have copies of the pack available. Print it out, discuss them with your managers and supervisors and how it can be used. It's a really great step towards ensuring injuries are managed appropriately if they do occur. Injured workers also have some responsibilities during the claim process. They must ensure that all the information that they provide to WorkCover is true and not misleading. They need to participate in the rehabilitation programs that are set out by their treating providers and also keep work cover up to date in letting us know if they return to any kind of work. That includes self-employment or working for another person or business and even if it's unpaid work, they still need to let us know. We encourage all claimants to download our Australian First Worker Assist app, which we're really proud of. It delivers real-time information regarding their claim is really easy to use on any device and helps injured workers stay connected and feel supported during their claim. Via the app, they can receive alerts regarding any upcoming medical appointments they might have. They can track their compensation payments. They can claim medical expenses really quickly and easily through the app, and they can stay connected with us anywhere, anytime. It's completely free, and we really encourage you to support them in downloading that app through the App Store. Next, we look at renewing your policy. From the 1st of July each year, WorkCover works with employers across Queensland to renew their policies. You're responsible for renewing your policy by accurately declaring your wages and paying your premium during our premium renewal period each year. Your premium is based on your claims experience, your industry rating, and wages that you've paid to your employees for the year. We can help you ensure that you're covering the right people and assist you during the premium renewal time with any questions you have. All you need to do is let us know your wages from the previous financial year and provide an estimate for the coming year by the 31st of August. You'll also need to tell us during the year if there's any changes to your business activity because this may affect your premium rate. Also let us know if you have some changes to your contact details or you would like to authorise someone else from your business to act on your behalf. Over the past few years, WorkCover's introduced a range of flexible payment options for employers who meet their renewal obligations. Fee and interest-free payments are available. You can choose from monthly, bi-monthly or quarterly payments. So that allows you to spread the payments over time to suit your cash flow. We also provide an early payment discount. You can receive a 5% discount simply by declaring on part time and paying your premium in full by the 16th of September. Please note there's some lower limits that apply to this one. 
WorkCover has a simplified premium calculation model for small and new businesses, being those businesses with an actual wage declaration of under of 1.5 million or less. As with WorkCover's premium calculation methods, the simplified model is based on claims performance, which for small business equates to a rating from between one to five. It's a, the rating is based on a percentage of your industry rate. The simplified model was introduced to prevent premium volatility as employees can only move up or down one rating category between each financial year. This caps annual premium variances at 10%. Under this model, you can reap the benefits of improving your workplace safety sooner, and only the claims cost from the previous financial year will influence your policy rating. There's a few other benefits as well, including the $500 claim cost protection, which provides you peace of mind and helps prevent minor claims from affecting your policy rating. The first $500 of claims costs on a policy per year will not count towards your claims experience. There's also a known claims discount, for policyholders with a rating two, three, four, or five, they'll automatically move down one policy rating if you have a claim for a year. This guarantees a 10% reduction in the amount of the industry rate you pay. Employers with a policy rating of one benefit from the best available discount to their premium at only 80% of the industry rate. The simplified premium model is just another way that work cover is supporting small businesses in Queensland. Uh, just a question relating to this slide, Kerry. What is the industry rate and how is it calculated? Great question. So you'll notice there on our slide, we talk about the percentage of the industry rate. Every accident insurance policy is given a work cover industry classification. And this is the classification that provides that industry rate. Those weeks are based on the Australian Bureau of Statistics um, classification system and it basically looks at grouping like business activities. Generally work cover accident insurance policy will only have one week allocated and that describes your predominant or primary business activity. With Each week has a corresponding premium rate or industry rate which is calculated using the claims cost performance of all business classified in that injury industry. Sorry. The week rate is not linked to perceived risk, it's linked to actual claims experience throughout the year for all the employees in Queensland that are represented under that week. In a lot of, if a lot of claims are made across Queensland businesses for a particular week, you'll see a rise in that industry rate. Correspondingly, if there's not so many, you'll see a fall. Looking to finish up with a few things that's really key and important for you to remember. Workers' compensation is compulsory for all employers in Queensland. If you're unsure who to cover, please give us a call and we can work you through your individual situation. Injury prevention is better than a cure. Having a safe workplace and reliable workplace health and safety procedures can really make a big difference to your claims and your premium. You can get assistance from workplace health and safety or online through the website. There are significant health benefits to staying at work and you'll always hear us talking about return to work. Returning to work early, even on modified or suitable or reduced hours, um, promotes rehabilitation and gets people back to work faster. So we encourage people to be prepared. Start by compiling a suitable duties register using our in injury information pack. You can download it from the website or there's a link to it on this presentation. Also support your workers, remembering it's a no fault scheme. By providing your support through the claim process, you really minimise the risk of common law action and you encourage a return to work quicker and a quicker resolution of their injury, which can then reduce your premium. Open and regular communication with all parties is key. But most importantly of all, we're here to help. If you have any concerns or questions, please give us a call, either via your customer advisor or our 1300 number being 1300 362 or 128. Thanks so much for your time this afternoon. I really hope that you found the information valuable. Is there anyone who has any questions? Excellent. Thanks, Kerry. We do have a few questions that have come through. Uh, first one is, is there any waiting periods for work cover? 
No, we don't have any waiting periods. Once you phone us or jump online and take out a policy with us, you're covered from that day. However, new businesses really should note that they need to take out a policy within five days of commencing employment. Note, however, that we don't pay for the, you're not paying for the number of days of coverage, you're paying for how much wages you're declaring in a financial year. So it's really important, it's really um, useful to be able to take out that policy early. So if you're putting out feelers that you're looking to employ someone, you can call us right now, tell us how much you think you're going to pay in wages for that year, and then you, it's out of the way and you're all covered and ready to go when that person commences with you. Great. Um, I've heard something about apprenticeships not needing cover. Can you clarify that for us? Yeah, that's absolutely right. So in 2017, we um, introduced a apprentice discount. So when you're declaring a wages to us, you can actually remove any wages costs that you pay out to apprentices. Given that wages are a really major factor in how your premium is calculated, clearly this results in a much cheaper premium. It's just another way that we've put it out there that we can support Queensland businesses and encourage people to take on apprenticeships within their business. Great. Uh, do we need to provide individual names of the employees? No, you don't. Um, all we're looking for when you're looking to renew your policy or take out a policy with us is what you're looking to pay in wages for the coming financial year as an estimate and what you've actually paid for the previous financial year. You can log, log that with us online after your wages declaration form is sent out to you in July in the renewal period. It's really easy online. There's a step-by-step -step process that can work you through exactly what you need to declare or you can just jump in and plug in those couple of figures and you're done. You can actually even go through the process there, calculate your premium and pay it all in one spot 24 hours a day. So it's a really great online system that makes it so easy to work with WorkCover. Okay, and our last question, uh, why do we have to cover a household worker? Shouldn't they be covered under their own insurance? Uh, there certainly are some people that do have their own coverage, although it would be a, an income protection type insurance or it could be one of our workplace personal injuries insurance. What we're really looking at here is are they deemed a worker under the legislation? Because if they are deemed a worker, then they really do need to be covered for workers' compensation and the workplace injuries and you're seen as their employer. Basically, it's a, it's a really affordable policy and it gives everyone peace of mind should someone be injured in or around your home. Excellent. Thank you so much, um, Kerry, for coming in to present today. And thank you to everyone that's joined us for today's session. Um, all registrants will receive a copy of the webinar recording and presentation slides. Thank you for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.